У вас микрофон выключен, если вы что-то говорите. А, да, <смех> что-то говорю. Вадика на видео запишем. Все, Про харизму он нам в прошлый раз рассказывал. Вот так он репетировал, пока мы были с Я была и был этот... Вильям. Вильям, да. Ты их пригласи всех, напиши там компани митинг группу. Я просто хочу, чтобы они на компани митинг при, приучались ходить. Если они даже мое день рождения поймут, может, что мне это важно. Но они собирались к этой идти к 12 как меня зовут? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Кто-то зашел, не вижу в том. Oh. Hello. Hi, William. How are yeah. you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Happy birthday, Natalia. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You today at noon visit with Kevin? Yeah, yeah I, I got a call yesterday from Kevin. Mm -hmm. So he said he just asked me to help the Austin one, the penthouse. Mm -hmm. So he just want to see me. So yeah, so I'm going to see him at noon at the Austin. Alex, any, any leads? Sorry? Um, no. No, maybe try to post now. One more, so the leads. Mm. You know, when we went there, Jeremy was sick and we invited another boy to make pictures mm -hmm. but um he not very experienced in pictures for real estate maybe this is a problem maybe try to mm -hmm. um, hello, hello. Okay. Uh, yeah. hi 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 how are you mm -hmm. maybe try to make pictures and videos maybe it will be better luck with your pictures and videos you mean the austin when i visit austin yeah yeah because but, uh, yeah. for some reason when this guy make it always it's not uh, oh, 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 okay so no a bit confusing because that was on the market for a while right and then yeah yeah but it, pictures it, it, and video were wrong i think maybe this is a problem picture and video quality you mean. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, because they were done to person who not really knows about real estate. He just uh, mm -hmm. regular, but was there by accident. Okay. So <laughs> maybe yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. If that is okay, then I I I bring my the uh, SDR <laughs> my good camera. Okay. Then I'll yeah. Take a yeah. Picture. But my my question is that I don't understand because that was on the market for a while and then Kevin just showed a lot of times, right? Previously. Not really, maybe Not really? three times only. Oh, only? Oh. One guy was with a dog, uh, was mm -hmm. okay, younger guy with a dog. They mm -hmm. kind yeah, of the German, sh German Shepherd, right? Kevin yeah, mentioned that. Yeah, they kind of that. decided against them. Another lady applied, she was maybe not enough income. Mm. Yeah, so they, um, the reason Kevin uh, asking you so to, to have activity and to have pictures and videos done. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I will talk with Kevin, yeah, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. This is... Oh, a lot of people joining today. I, Irina <laughs> joined. <laughs> Hello, Jer. Yeah, it's due to the birthday. That's why everybody came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, hi, Irina, and how did you, Jeremy? How are you? Uh, hi, Good. hi. Good to see you here. Good to see you here. Yeah. Ciao, guys. Hi, Irina, Jeremy. you are in a cabin. <laughs> no, no. I'm from home, and I'm going now to Richmond to a CBC office to renew driver license. I will be online driving car. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 It's not. It's our house. Nice we have to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Irina is mortgage broker, William. Sorry. 
mortgage broker. Oh, I see. Okay, good to see you, Harina. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you too, Harina. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. So, Vadim will give us a small present presentation. Mm. Okay. William I and did. I saw it, but they will be now improved version of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, I thought that I gave it to you already last week and that I don't, that I don't give it to you now. <laughs> we don't really remember, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, you want me to do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, last week, do you hear me? Does, does everybody hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, last time I already uh, kind of uh, spontaneously gave this presentation and now I'm going to do it obviously spontaneously again. It was uh, on um, on the five points that make somebody uh, that make somebody charismatic. Um, I don't know, maybe you guys uh, have your own opinions about what makes uh, what makes uh, somebody charismatic and what is charisma generally and how you can uh, how you need it in the in the real estate during your sales or or uh, talking to people do you have any uh, anything which you can say about that Marina knows and jeremy yes jeremy or irena yeah maybe you can uh, or or you're not on the microphone now like i just wanted to hear your thoughts what is a charismatic person and uh, what could be why it's necessary to be charismatic in real estate maybe Alex can say he didn't hear it william and Alex. i hear it so it's not fair to us yeah us. that's true yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's why i'm asking them maybe they can <laughs> maybe they can have your generate their opinions about it okay so for me i'd say being charismatic and uh it's more of a in a sales sense would be be knowing what you're talking about, being confident and being friendly with whoever you're talking to in order to build good rapport. Yeah, well, those are definitely some points. Um, so of course, uh, charismatic is bas basically um, basically the X, X factor, that special quality, that special something which makes you attractive to people. Um, what about uh, what about uh, Alek? What do you think makes somebody charismatic? Mm. I think charismatic person is the person who can easily build a contact with anyone, with any person. Just just an easy. No, that's it. Yeah, of course, it's true. Definitely, somebody who is uh, somebody who is charismatic will always uh, engage better with people because people will connect with this uh, with the charismatic person more than with a non charismatic person. And uh, I think uh, being charismatic is not only like um, when you see somebody, but it's also like in your in your um, messages, in your in your in your posts, in your emails right that that's also mm -hmm. is it a is it a dry email uh, which just has three information and you accept it like some numbers or you have something like you know a smiley sign or 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 how are you or um, an exclamation mark something the the charisma goes beyond just meeting people i think the, the the charisma is also through other mediums like writing or talking as well for example a, a charismatic voice is also a voice which maybe changes the tone more than somebody who is speaking monotonely. So there is just more energy and more engagement with somebody else. Um, what about, uh, who else is here? What about uh, Irina? Or, or she is busy now, she cannot say her uh, <laughs> opinion. <laughs> no, she is She's driving. driving. Uh, so he, yeah. She was kind of lost in a, during <laughs> sitting in her car. Lost yeah. in translation. Okay, um, so um, I, I wanted to do, um, there are just a few points that I have learned uh, through the years of me being a, um, also a professional ballroom dancer, which, um, which I've worked with coaches 
um, to get this information. And uh, this system is uh, that, that I wanted to tell you is uh, developed by a Dutch man named Maximilian Winkelhuis. He owns a communications company in uh, Amsterdam. And uh, he teaches various individuals who um, are in performing arts as well as in politics and in sales. So he, uh, he works with them on team, on team building and, uh, and also in, um, in other subjects. Do we have a new entrance here? It's a uh, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. All right. Hey, Kevin. Ask him this question, he knows. <laughs> oh, okay. Kevin, can you hear me? I, I can uh, I can hear you. First of all, hello. And what time hello. of day is it where you? Oh, it's a bit later. It's a bit later. <laughs> you have okay. earlier, and I have later. Or uh, more, more specifically, later. What time? Oh, in uh, Megan is here. Yeah. Megan is here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Kevin, we are in the middle of lecture. Okay. You a little I bit love late. <laughs> you you about yeah, first of I, all, I, I was... first of all, I apologize for being a little uh, late. Um, uh, uh, actually, first of all, happy birthday, Natalia. Yes, uh, what yes. Time it's of, good that you. What, it's what, good that you spoke. What to time it. of day? What time of day were you born? I know I ask you this every year, and I don't get an answer. <laughs> every year. I forget every time. My mom knows. I will ask you. Oh, okay. So I, I kind of uh, no, stepped in here in the one of those. Middle, middle of the meeting here. Uh, Vadim, you were talking about charisma, this, that, and the other. Um, <laughs> yes. So trying, uh, if I could just throw in my two cents worth, you know, trying to build a relationship with a, say, a client, for example, you know, always a technique that I've used over the years is, is try to get some personal information from the client, as in, you know, their family life, what they like to do for their hobbies, this, that, and the other. And they start to give you little tidbits of information that often I will use down the road. And it, it, they, they really appreciate it the next time I speak to them when I, when I bring that up, okay? So it's not all about business, right? And it's about them personally, okay? So I just wanted to throw that out there and continue. Super. Yeah, that's probably um, uh, a good quality because actually I think we even uh, on our last meeting, we were trying to, <laughs> we were trying to, um, we were trying to um, specify uh, which people that we know are charismatic and you came up in that list quite high. <laughs> it was it was it was acknowledged by uh, by Natalia and and uh, and by William. And <laughs> and we thought that it was one of your uh, one of your strong points. Well, I think definitely, yeah, of course, you, you have to you have to engage with people and you have to uh, give them the feeling uh, that they're just not like a, a customer or, or, or a number in, in, in your firm, but you're interested in them genuinely and uh, and want to right. build a more friendly connection with them than just business because it creates more closeness and, and breaks this distance. Right. And of course, yeah. people are willing to trust somebody who is closer to them, who is friendlier to them rather than, you know, some, right. uh, some distant Kevin, authoritarian. Um, to answer your question, I just asked uh, my mom. I born 11.40 at night, so 20 minutes to midnight on 11. Oh, okay, excellent. So you were on the verge of, uh, uh, of of tomorrow being your birthday, but it's it's today, and so you're not I born yet. It. Not yet. <laughs> a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have to wait. Yeah, and actually, it's a different time. Uh, Vadim, often you come into Vancouver uh, in the uh, summertime. Stephen and... also join us. Uh, Stephen, hello. From yes, I will come in, and I hope family. to see you soon. Hey guys, how's everybody going? Hi. Hey, wow, so many people here today. <laughs> well, Natalia's loved. What can we say? As soon as I received the message, hey, it's my birthday, I'm like, I'm in for sure. So perfect, awesome. perfect. So I guess that's like a big happy birthday from all of us to, to Natalia. 
Absolutely. That she is yeah. working on her birthday, even though she's not born yet officially until 11.40 uh, p.m. <laughs> Uh, we already... still congratulate her already before because as I've learned from many of my uh, Chinese uh, um, uh, friends that it's a good luck to congratulate somebody earlier than later. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank well, you guys. Well, happy for birthday me, anyway. it's a big present each time when you join weekly meetings. <laughs> so I hope you now know. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah, so I never actually met. It's nice to finally see you anyway. I've seen you dance. I've seen all kinds of things that your mom has posted anyway. So uh, congratulations on all of your success also. And, uh, you know, only hearing you speak for a few seconds here, you know, to Kevin and, and so on. I mean, you're a champ yourself, right? I mean, the confidence just radiates off you, which is amazing. So, you know, good job with everything that you're doing anyway. You should be proud. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for the kind oh, words. Oh, ask uh, Stephen what it means to be. Arithmetic, probably he yes. knows. Stephen, oh, you have a you you have you seem like you have a Ukrainian last name. Do you also speak? I do not actually. My last name is Ukrainian. Uh, my great grandmother was Polish. My great grandfather was from Ukraine. Um, they seem to, as the generations have kind of passed on, they would you know yeah. kind of pass on the language of whatever you know the lady was. So my grandmother was French, and then they kind of well, for whatever reason they stopped. So my dad okay. doesn't speak French. Um, it's kind of been lost over the years anyway, which is kind of unfortunate. You know, I have picked up some business because of my last name and stuff, but unfortunately I don't know a lot over there. I've been able to learn a little bit from, you know, talking to, to Natalia a little bit there and stuff. And, you know, and, and like I said, I've picked up a few clients over the years uh, because of the Ukrainian last name and stuff, which has definitely been a great thing. You know, I'm proud, but unfortunately I only know what I know. Right. And I mean, I've been raised in Canada here and, kind of you yeah. know stuck in her own little world so it's uh it's nice over these last few years to be able to meet people abroad all over the world anyway which has been phenomenal it's really unfortunate of the things that has happened over the world but it's nice to be able to meet yeah. people like yourselves of course that uh you know that are like-minded loving people and stuff and i mean it's it's, it's amazing but cool. Jim is trying yeah. to get, give a speech about charisma but before that he asking people what they think about it yeah maybe you maybe you have you can say your opinion about it about, about charisma and about getting excited kind of type of stuff or what type of, like 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 uh, what is what means charisma to you and how is it possible is it important to be charismatic in real estate absolutely because i mean people radiate off the energy and stuff that you have right so i mean from there if you're charismatic and you're out there and you are radiating that success and just that you're a good caring person people want to be around like-minded successful good people and you know i mean it's just i think that you have to have that energy for sure because it's something that's there your first impression you have with people is probably going to be the impression that you have with them and people just want to be around that they need that whether they tell you in words or not they need that and they gravitate towards good successful people and i mean i, I talk about success a lot success has nothing to do with the money the cars the tools the toys the airplanes the whatever is do you feel happy do you feel excited and where you are in your life today? And if you can feel that that love and that excitement and that energy around you, then I believe that you're successful if you truly believe that you are. But I think that once again, in selling real estate wise, anything to do in business wise and being a good person, people can kind of have a pretty good feel the first time they talk to you. Because I mean, are you caring? Do you care about them? Do you listen to them? You know, these little things that are there, but just be a good person. You know, there's so many people that are reaching for the stars, which I like to do on a very regular basis because I think they're a lot closer than most people realize. But just be a good person along the way. And I believe that if you if you can help your community, you know, your friends, your family, the people that you love the most, if you can help the people around you, they will always help you get to where you want to go also, right? It's that family loving environment that I think is super, super important. And, you know, the nice thing is, is we don't have to do business with everybody all over the world. You can, but you don't have to. And there's been many times where if I don't like you, I don't work with you, right? And I mean, it's just a matter of having that kind of mindset that frees up a lot of time in your life because you're removing the negativity, you're removing that whatever that you just don't like and really try to focus on the people that are close to you. Because if you can do that, you can build a business that's phenomenal and you can build one that everybody's going to refer you to their business and they're going to help you. And you're going to have an army of people around you that are going to help you get to where you want to go because they like you, they love you and they trust you. And they want to be part of your life, right? Your business. So that's why I say for this stuff here, 
I'm very passionate about just getting excited, just doing the things that you love to do and hang out with the people that you truly, truly like and love. I think that, you know, if you can do that, you can have a phenomenal life or business and you can have a lot of fun along the way. Cool. So uh, thanks for thanks for your opinion. I think that shows that we all agree that being charismatic is quite important in life, in business, and of course, in real estate. Because generally, if people will, will, will just very easily just like you, they'll be more likely just to either rent your uh, apartment or, or buy, buy your apartment or do anything generally. So, and you, by the way, I already heard from uh, many of your remarks, I already heard some uh, qualities that are important that define a charismatic person, because I wanted to share some uh, knowledge that I've gained through my uh, through my years, also as a as a performer and as a um, also as a professional ballroom dancer, um, working with the specialists in these fields. Um, there are five main qualities, um, according to um, a Dutch researcher named Maximilian Winkelhuis, uh, who owns a communication firm in Holland. And uh, he made a research and uh, defined five qualities which make a charismatic person. So I think I already heard some qualities uh, from, from, from the speeches of people, from their remarks. Let's try to define them. Um, I mean, William and Natalia have already heard my uh, presentation <laughs> last week. So I'm going to ask the other people, like, um, what do you think are some of the characteristics that there are five defined characteristics, according to Maximilian Winkelhuis, that define a charismatic person. So let's try to um, give them a name. So I will give you the first one because um, I think you basically, uh, Stephen, you spoke about it. You were um, uh, saying positive energy. Um, so uh, radiating that positivity, that sunshine uh, from yourself. And that is already the first quality, I would say. It is called playful child. So one of the qualities that somebody needs to have is playful child. It means that you are... Um, you have positive energy, you are uh, you're ra radiating something nice, you are able to um, do, something, uh, do something spontaneous, you're able to laugh, you're about, you're, you're not that serious basically, yeah, that you are, you're able to have a laugh, you're able to play, play with the situation um, which you have. Can you maybe, uh, Tell me something, what a playful child may be, or, or maybe a, somebody, an, um, an individual, a famous actor or a person around that you know that everybody can relate to who can be a playful child, which we can use as an image. Does anybody have any ideas? Uh, I, I don't know about specific, but it, it's, a good, it, it's a good point as far as uh, uh, being a playful child and you know, the importance of laughter is goes miles and there's real laughter and fake laughter. OK, so we try to determine the difference between the two. Now, a lot of us genuinely know how to laugh. Right? Okay? there's a lot of people out there that are very serious can say something funny which is funny to everybody but not to them and they put on a forced laugh and it's quite obvious to most of us right so this is alluding to your playfulness that you're speaking about and <clears throat> that goes um, with being charming okay so being charismatic has a lot to do with being charming without being too mm -hmm. charming as you know, we yes. can be too charming, but and uh, it can get carried away. <laughs> yeah. So the laugh. Oh, and, you see, that's a good laugh. So everybody, everybody can probably tell that it's it's a child would usually when when a child laughs, it would probably do it quite naturally and not forced. So that's already maybe something exactly. you're trying to say. That is exactly correct. Okay. Anyway, it's just so. So what kind of what kind of uh let's give this playful child a name i think we we gave it into the group uh last week but maybe you will find somebody else uh 
we gave playful child um, as an image, we said the personality Jim Carrey would be a playful child because he is able to do spontaneous things. He has a natural laugh. People want to be um, around them. He makes people laugh. What do you think about that as being the image of a playful child? Well, I see two sides to Jim Carrey. A lot of it's forced. He he, he really is. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a funny guy for sure, but a lot of it is uh, very, very forced. And he just, just does kooky things. Yeah. You know, uh, kind of a little like uh, Adam Sandler, right? He He's an interesting character, the most unlikely of movie stars, okay, that has managed to take his comedy act to uh another level he's been extremely successful unlikely so because he's not the greatest looking guy he's kind of uh anyways he's a little unique Uh, jim carrey um kind of similar jim carrey is a lot funnier uh, but they have two different styles they're completely different um but both extremely successful and if you kind of look at the difference between the two, um, and, and and they're both in the same industry, but the difference between the two is is incredible, right? But equally yeah. successful, right? But what, what, Carrey, what other uh, what other name what other person would you then give as a playful child, which is a, a more acceptable uh, kind of uh, example to you? Well, I think as we're on the subject, like comedians are a very unique group of people. Um, and for whatever reason, and, and I don't know why we haven't been able to figure it out, but there's a very high suicide rate uh, for comedians. Okay. Now, I'm not sure the reason why, like Robin Williams is a good example. Um, and it mm-hmm. goes, you know, there's just many of them. And I don't know if, there, there's obviously a lot of inner child in most most comedians, um, but whether you know they're hiding something uh, or not, I, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor, but I find comedians a, a very interesting group of people. Um, in that, from the surface, they're they're very happy, they're funny, they're friendly, but on the inside, something else is going on. Okay, so unfortunately for a lot of them, they weren't able to seek the correct help or, or, or whatever the case is that turned them down a different road. Okay, it's an interesting subject, though. I'm, I'm, I'm going off the playful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else can so give? Everyone uh, from Seinfeld, Sun, um, right? Seinfeld, yes. Fantastic show. What's his name? And, what, what was his name? What was his name? Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. Well, I think he was a really, uh, I think it's a great example, actually. Oh, very, very much so. I think it's a great example. So let's put, let's put uh, Jim Carrey as well as uh, Jerry Seinfeld for a playful child. (laughs) Um, You know, I heard something interesting jerry seinfeld said uh, and 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 a lot of these guys have huge egos and, and understandably so but jerry seinfeld comes out and he says you know never in our for the rest of our our lives we will never see a sitcom with such success ever again and i thought about that and i'm thinking to myself how right he is well, Friends, Friends was a big, uh, big success. I'm not sure if it was even more. Um, well, it, it was. It was. A, it was a different kind of right. It, it certainly wasn't nearly as funny as Seinfeld. Of course, um, it was much lighter. It was not like based on this uh, this comedy uh, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But you know, I I thought uh, him saying that was just so true. There will never be the success. I think this guy makes 150 million dollars a year every year and it doesn't have to you know all his uh reruns right well, 150 good, million. Good, good role model for a playful child something <laughs> well that the whole group that whole that whole gang is a good example of you know mm-hmm. life throws curveballs at us but 
you know, to take a curveball and something serious and turn it into fun uh, and, and, and get some positive energy out of it, right? So good yes. example. Good example, good example. And um, so we have established one person and we have established an image for it. So uh, Jim Carrey and uh, Jerry Seinfeld, a little bit different, but still very playful individuals. And if we want to extract that quality from ourselves, we could maybe uh, have that, that person's image. Um, it leads me right away to the next uh, quality because um, actually you both spoke to, uh, about this, both um, actually Kevin and Steven, that it's important to listen to people. It's important to connect with them. And actually the next quality is, um, is uh, being compassionate. So empathy to other people, like hearing them, feeling them, giving them the feeling that you're really connecting and hearing them out is also one of the five qualities that make a charismatic person. Um, maybe you can, you can um, we gave uh, a compassionate person um, the image, for example, well, at least visually of what we see there on, on television, Oprah. Would you agree that that's, that's a good uh, image for compassionate? I would, yes. I think, you know, once again, anybody that sits back, I mean, Oprah's been around a long time, right? I mean, all of her success has been truly from being in the moment and actually caring about other people. And you look at, you know, I mean, if you're going to be, you know, in that moment, you need to really, truly not just listen to people, but you need to really care and be in that moment, right? You could say it and be in it. And they're like, and say, you could say it, you could you could say it, but not necessarily be in that total mindset. And she is, right? And I mean, that's why, I mean, she's one of the most loved people that's ever been here because of that reason, right? I mean, she's very, very compassionate and, and you know, it's just, it's, she's, she's amazing, right? So, I mean, to me, that's something that I think that she would be a great model for that. Yeah. In, in, and, in, in, in general for Oprah, it's just a great listener. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Most, I think that's, most of us like to flap our gums and um, I shouldn't say most of us, but a lot of us, <laughs> <there>. the, <laughs> the, the important, the importance of, of, of listening and taking the time out to actually really care. And, and like you said, Vadim, uh, having empathy for other people's situation in hopes that they'll have empathy for us if we need it too. Right. So it's a two way street. Can we can we give another person another uh, famous person uh, apart from Oprah? Do we have any other uh, thoughts? Or maybe not a famous person, maybe somebody around you that you know that is really good at this. Go ahead, Natalia. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. Stephen very compassionate. He always have a. Um, yes, he uh, is. Events uh, for helping others. Yeah. Well, thank you. I noticed you didn't bring. I noticed you didn't bring my name up. <laughs> <laughs> you're 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 an example for a different quality. She, she was gonna uh, name me sex. She was gonna name I me I guess, uh, Kevin, you are in each category. We have to somehow <laughs> give us examples. So. Well, thank you very much for that, Natalia. It's something to wear. You know, every every day I wake up in the morning and I just try to, you know, obviously you get up, you do your routines, you do everything else. But I mean, I really, truly do try to make the difference that I can with as many people as I can throughout the day. And I do it because I really, truly want to do it. I don't wake up just for chasing money and chasing whatever else. Like I really try to find people that I can help because I think that there is enough success for everybody out there. And I find that there's a lot of challenges and I find, especially in these last few years, I had an appointment right before here anyway, and I was talking to somebody and, and even he mentioned about, you know, how everybody's just been beaten down so much in these last few years that people are not even trying anymore. And it's like anything I can do to just try to inspire you to create that spark to get you to go out and move one step forward is a win. You know, you don't have to have huge big goals to save the world or to go do whatever, but if you can win your day, that's something that's super, super important. And all of a sudden, if you can win multiple days, you can totally have a different life than what you have right this second, right? So from all that stuff, like that's something that is really important to me. It's important to everybody. And we've been very fortunate to be able to change some people's lives very much 
to where, you know, like we've been able to save some people's lives, you know, and do stuff like that, where they were planning on killing themselves the day that we met and stuff like that. Like, it's just been phenomenal, the stories that I could share with you, right? Like, it's been absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, I just, I love life. I love being around the people that I love being around. And, you know, I just want to help in any way I can, period. End of story. Awesome. Awesome. And it's good that it, this comes honestly from you. So I think we, yep. we, 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 we agree that whichever of these qualities, if, it, if it's genuine, if it comes from you genuinely, it's much, yep. much stronger. It's, it so is, right? And I mean, you have to truly be in that moment to enjoy that moment, to listen, to, to you know, to listening is the hardest part of everything. Like it really truly is. I have a lot to say. I get excited. Right. And sometimes it's like just through the conditioning and the experience and the education that I've had over the years and just the experiences, you have to learn to shut your mouth and just sit back and truly listen. But that's really hard for the majority of the people in the world. Right. And it's like when you can truly be there and ask the right questions and be in that moment, you can learn a lot about people and you can build incredible relationships that will last forever because they're real. They're not just yeah. made up. I'm not just talking to you because, hey, you're going to give me some money or, you know, you're going to you're going to give me something. If you help enough people out there and you build the best relationships you can with everybody you can, you can have a phenomenal life that will benefit everybody around you. And that's that's how I feel with that one. Great. I think that it's uh, it's also important to um, kind of say that when you speak and communicate with people, it's important to have a dialogue with them, which actually is a two-way situation. Uh, apart from having a monologue, we all know people that have monologues when they communicate with people, uh, as opposed to having dialogues to hear from the other side as well. I had a conversation with my 19-year-old daughter there yesterday. She's actually, she's coming in the office to help us do a little bit of administration work, a little bit of assistant duties and stuff for me. She's uh, going through to be a teacher, so she's off for the summer. So I'm like, well, come on in, we can you know, you can help around here. And we were just talking about relationships just yesterday in the car. I'm like, a relationship is 100% and 100%. It's not 50-50 because it's either you're in the relationship or you're not, right? If you're 50% in, well, you're only giving 50% of what you have and who you are, it's not going to win, right? Like you have to go all in and sometimes be vulnerable and be yourself and find those ways and be there together and, and it's amazing, right? So, I mean, that's kind of my opinion with that one. You need to be 100% in. There's no 75% in. It's like you're all in or you're not in, right? But mm. I don't know. That's, I know I heard. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Vadim. No, no, no. Uh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll make a small remark and then you get to. Um, last time when we were speaking, Natalia actually said something interesting for me because she said that she was trying to hold back this quality when she spoke to people because she thought it's maybe not proper because she is kind of like a, in, in selling something or more like maybe needs to be like in a business relationship with this other person. And then from, um, from, from my presentation, she understood that actually she doesn't need to hold that back. If she feels she needs to be compassionate and show some emotion, it's actually quite nice and it's a plus to you rather than a minus. You know, myself, guys, I'm six foot three and a half, almost six foot four. I'm 307 pounds. I'm a pretty big dude, right? I cry more than anybody else I know. When you talk about my friends, my family, the people that are close to me, I sob like a little baby. And I mean that very seriously. Like I've spoken in front of, you know, 4,000 people at one time, for an example. And I'm up on this stage literally bawling my eyes out. Because I'm so passionate telling people how much I care about them. And it's the truth. We talk about business. I will fight you in the parking lot. We will fight to the death and I will win and so on. But as soon as you talk about the things that are close to me, the tears just start rolling because I'm so proud, right? And it's like that being vulnerable, that being human is so powerful. I'm tearing up right now even talking about this stuff because it's the truth right? It's like, be yourself. You know, so many people are trying to mirror image other people, other successful people who they think are successful. But as Kevin said earlier, about people killing themselves and doing whatever else, they have lots of money, they're movie stars, they're very well known people, but they're not successful in their own bodies, you know, soul, spirit, whichever else. And they're broken. 
be yourself, right? If you feel passionate about something, speak about it. If you feel passionate about something, react a certain way, respect other people in the area. And I mean, even as far as, you know, we were always raised as young kids, treat people the way they want to be treated, you know, or treat people the way you want, you want to be treated, but it's not treat the way people you want to be treated. It's treat people the way that they want to be treated. Give them what they want, right? Treat them the way that they want to be treated and just be yourself. But be nice. You know, uh, you know, we're go we're going through some interesting times, as you know. We do property management, and we're running into a lot of uh, families and couples that are getting divorced and separated, and so on. Now, as you know, we all we're all coming off this this pandemic, and we we've all spent an extraordinary amount of time together. Okay, and. Stephen, you spoke about, you know, being 100% in a relationship and, and, and you're, you're 100% correct. And a lot of us, that 100% starts to dwindle over time sometimes and we're giving 50%. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is, is, and you spoke about this as well, is balance. You know, we spend a lot of time with our spouses and families and so on and so forth. But every once in a while, we have to recognize that that other person needs space, space alone or with other family and friends, whatever the case is. And, you know, nowadays, like I just had somebody over at the house, I have a suite for rent downstairs, and he was just going on and he's in the middle of a, a nasty divorce. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard this story. And I think it has a lot to do with that balance, you know, and, and us spending too much time with our loved ones it's important to give one another space okay um that's that's the only point i'm trying to make but it's created a real problem in society and uh hopefully over time it fixes itself but currently it uh it's a growing problem and the uh just to allude to some more negatives out there the amount of violence that's out on uh, uh, everywhere. Every country is experiencing, people have short fuses, right? We've all been through a lot and we all need to figure out how to snap out of this uh, doldrum, if you will. So listening again is the most important thing. Listening to our, our family, our friends, uh, et cetera, I think is gonna be our best way out of it. Anyways, so I didn't mean to sound as... like Debbie, Debbie Downer there, but. As, as far as the, the negative thoughts and everything else, Kevin, sorry to cut you off, but just a point yeah. that I'm going to kind of get going before we get going on other things. But sure. in this stuff here, there's an easy little trick that I've been able to do over the years. There's so much negativity out there in the world, and it's not hard to kind of, it's very powerful. You know, somebody negative walks in the room, and all of a sudden they start complaining about things. What do you start doing? You start complaining about things. And it's right. like, you know, this stuff is there. It's just, it's it's been here since the beginning of time. But whenever all of a sudden, like I'm talking to people that are negative, and if I'm in my car or if I'm at my office or just by myself for three seconds, it's like, I'll just kind of close my eyes, take a deep breath. And I focus about my wife, my kids, the things that make me the happiest person in the entire world. And all of a sudden, as right. you think about these things, you have a choice yourself. You can continue to keep being negative, keep going down the negative path, or you can switch your mindset and start thinking about the things that make you positive. As you start thinking about things that start making you positive, you start feeling better. As you start feeling better, you start getting a different result. All of a sudden, from now, you're in total control of your life instead of allowing everyone else around to do so to control how you feel and so on. You get to choose. But the whole thing is, is the majority of the people stay in that negative state and they just continue to keep vibrating the negative thing. When you think about negative things, you attract more negative things into your life. You think positive, mm -hmm. you get more things. Now, it is, some people may say, well, Steve, you're a robot. No, it's taken me a long time to master this. But it's something that's yeah. it's very easy to switch once you know how to do it. But you have to break free from the negativity. And with everything that's happened, COVID-wise, all these bad, horrible things, wars and people dying, and it's horrible. Like, it's absolutely horrible. But from there, we as people need to free our minds. We need to relax for a second. We need to take a deep breath. And we need to change the way that we feel. If we change the way we feel, all of a sudden now we come into this group of people that are here. We can change the way everybody's feeling because people want to be around positive, successful people. And all of a sudden from there, it's like, hey, we radiate you up. We give you a little bit of spark. We, you know, inspire you a little bit. You go out and you go save the world by doing the same thing over and over again through many people through the, the day. 
you only have to talk to one person. You win by conversations. Go out there, have an incredible conversation with somebody, make them smile. And guess what? That negative energy disappears. And it's just the way that that goes down, right? We have friends that are depressed. We have friends that have killed themselves. We have friends that have done all kinds of crazy things to me, but obviously they were not in a good headspace. And I have no idea how they felt because I've never been that, that hurt, right? Mm -hmm. But from here, I can promise you, together as a group of people from all over the world, we can change the world, but we have to come together as one unit and stop fighting, period, Yeah. right? So I'll try to summarize kind of the, this idea if we if we put it uh, to practicality if we for example meet somebody who has some negative thoughts or negative information to share we need to to be charismatic hear them out to see that they they, they, what's the, um, what's the they, they are hurt what's the but try to change it but try to change it after a while not stay there in the Reflect negativity them. but reflect it so and what's be, the be positive what's the, what's the technique when you run into somebody that's doing a lot of complaining there's many out there so says, what's the technique? You how, how do you how do you deal how do you deal with somebody that's complaining? Like I come from the school, you want to complain. You don't really have a right to complain unless you have a solution. So what's your solution? Well, from and this stuff here, it just comes down to where once again that you get to choose how long you want to talk to that people. We've all been in the store, ran into people we haven't that's talked to in a long time. Oh, actually, and sorry guys, yeah. I have to go to this here and you take off. Redeflect. You get to yeah. choose. Do you allow that to to continue to keep conversation? Or do you say, hey, you right. know what, guys, you know, listen to them for a second or so. Say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that you're having a bad day. You know, is there anything else you can do to help? And then try to change the topic to something else to deflect it. And as you can deflect it, well, then now you're in control. Even as far as asking questions, if you ever want to control a conversation, ask questions. You can deflect that. You can't tell me you can't turn a conversation that's going one way, totally the other way. You just have to ask the right yeah. questions. And if you can do so, then you can deflect. Great. Yeah, asking the right question has everything to do with listening. You have to listen. Yes. Because if you if not, you have no idea where they are, right? And I mean, it might you yeah. might listen for a short period of time. I'm not saying you have to listen to somebody rant for an hour, as we've all done. Yeah. We've all been there. We've all been through that. But as you kind of learn the techniques and you get to learn, you know, just how to be a mature adult and, and take control of your thoughts, your feelings, and so on, you can deflect. And as you can do that, you will see, you will wake up a completely different person and you'll be able to control you your will, thoughts. You're, search, you're, searching, you're, you're, you're searching for a solution. Why is it you're complaining? Is there a solution to, to this, right? Yep. And, and there usually is. So focus on the is. solution, not the complaint. You know what? A lot of you're absolutely 100% right with that one. And a lot of times it's just a matter of listening to see what's going on. And it could be something Correct. so small, but as soon as you just change the topic, and start talking about something and asking about their kids, asking about their work, asking about something that's important to them. It's amazing how eventually they will start to snap out of it and they will actually start radiating positive stuff. Also, they'll start to smile. You'll see their whole body language just completely change. And as that goes down, you just change their day, man. Cool. Thanks for that. Thanks for the, the contribution on that subject. Everybody had a lot to say about it about the about the uh, compassionate side but i'm going to go to the next point absolutely and you the next, and the next <laughs> you, everybody had passion while they were ex explaining their opinions that was awesome uh the next point is um also a very very important especially for me as a person who is a um a performer a dancer and it's called a uh, communicative body so it seems that somebody who has an either communicative body or accepted body so somebody who seems like they are natural in their movement that they are not still not stiff that they also have a positive posture uh, a positive gesturing and generally uh, not 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 frozen this is also a big big part so the body language generally it's a big big part of being uh, of being charismatic hello brent hi vadim Hi, Brent. Hi, nice, nice birthday, birthday. Hi, nice Talia. Nice, nice to see, to see you. everybody. Well, nice that you joined. We're uh, nice Thank that you, you joined. We're in the middle of a little presentation that I'm doing about uh, the five qualities that a charismatic person um, needs to have, according to um, some research uh, that that I have looked into. Oh, wonderful! So, um, 
<laughs> just to keep you up. Yes, the first uh, two to keep you up, we had uh, the first quality was Playful Child, something like uh, Jim Carrey or Jerry Seinfeld. Right. The second quality was being compassionate, something like um, yes. Oprah or Stephen. We, we, we agreed that Stephen was very good in this. And, and now I'm talking about the third quality, which is communicative body. So the body needs to be a positive body language. Um, can anybody give me a can anybody give me an example of somebody you know, maybe famous or just around you that has a communicative body, positive, accepted one, natural? I can see Vadim has a good body communication right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was gesturing like an Italian man just now. Uh, so. Okay, thank you. Maybe me because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dancer. I would tend to have um, I would tend to maybe use my body a little bit more than somebody else. Um, and maybe I'll give you a second example, which uh, actually uh, Maximilian, the man who developed this um, um, this method, gave me. Uh, he was saying for him, it was very clear. Um, I'm not sure if I'm uh, correct remembering the presidential elections of the USA. Was it Barack Obama, was he going against Hillary Clinton? Yes, I think so. Yes, yes, I also think that one time um, he, gave, he went, or, or was it against, did she go against Barack and against uh, Donald, right? She went up on both, I think. I think. So. I think so. Yeah, so he was saying that there was a very, very um, clear for him about who is more charismatic. And you didn't even need to look into the in, into their program. If you uh, kind of compared the communicative body of Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama, which one of them was more? Barack, for sure. Barack, or even if you compared communicative body uh, to Donald, Donald was also much more communicative. He would talk on the microphone. He would lean in. He would drink the water. He would throw the bottle. Uh, Barack had this smoothness uh, to movement and freedom and you know if you I think there was a, even a point where they would, there was some music playing and then they're like why don't you dance and move a little bit and Barack did a little groove and, and Hillary was freezing up and not doing anything so this has already sold the whole game and this was a great example um, for me for example so if you would be okay with having uh, Barack Obama as a second example of communicative body in a subtle subtle way actually probably the way that we would partly need it in 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 the real estate world mm -hmm. um yeah so that was that was the the next quality and um i think it brings us immediately to the next one <laughs> it kind of flows into the next one and the next quality is uh, being sensual so this is a big part of uh, being charismatic and there's a difference of, uh, of being uh, sensual and, uh, and sexual. Sexual is aggressive and sensual is a little bit more subtle. So it can be how, how you look somewhere, that, uh, how you say something, how you take the microphone or how you write something with your pen. There's something sensual, so slightly sexy about it. It needs to be attractive. And um, the, the art of seduction, by the way. The Art of Seduction. I even read that book. You there must you be a specialist in that. I'm, I'm, I'm writing my own book on that subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia. Natalia was actually saying that you're good in this, that you, you tend to have very positive, uh, positive uh, replies with, with, with the opposite sex, that they would find you attractive and that you're very good with vibing with them. Why, why thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and um, uh, let's 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 say some example of of of, of, a, of a sensual person that we either that we know or that we uh, for, for famous people. Can somebody tell me something? I I can tell you the first one that we said last time, which is very obvious. I think George Clooney is one. And he is, he is not, he's not aggressive in his way, but very subtle, but very, uh, I, I would say quite, quite sensual. Uh, would you so agree? He's a, char 
charming dude. He's a charming dude. He's, He's a, a charming dude. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's not even about chicks. It's it's also you immediately. If 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 if, if girls or women like him. That means there is something generally to like about him. So I think a man would also that. say, "Oh yeah." Sorry about that chick thing, by the way. That oh, it's just... okay. I'm 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 fine. I'm 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 a baller dancer. Sorry, it's fine sorry. Late. To... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so what what can you guys say about uh, about the sensual quality? Have you noticed that it's important to uh, for for charisma, or is that not something you would agree upon? Oh, of course it is. You know, you're, you know, you're, you're looking to create some ex excitement in today's dry world. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are just so monotone throughout their life. So, you know, creating positive energy and, uh, you know, in hopes of getting the same pod positive energy in, in return generally creates a good conversation. So communication, positive energy. It's yeah. And, uh, for some reason, we've been talking about men who have this. Do you know, uh, like, it's also very important with women, you know? And I was saying this example last time as well. You kind of need to have this system called ABF. Have you ever heard of ABF? I think so. Uh, always be flirting. So, <laughs> so oh, to, very a certain, good. to a certain not non-intrusive way, you always have to be playing with the with the other person that you're talking to right you have to have a be funny be charming have a spark in your eye so in a, in a, in a subtle way because it's just a, it, and a, you can be like this with everybody and to to do to improve this i mean just look at people you you know that are good at this and try to take some examples from them like uh, richard gear or george clooney <laughs> in my world they are very good at this and I think they're that, you know, when having all these different traits and stuff like that, it does make people attractive, right? It makes them sexy. It makes them whatever and all that stuff. So this way here, I mean, if you're listening, you're paying attention, your body movements are the right way. You're actually looking into their, their eyes. You know, you're not sitting there with your arms crossed. Like you're actually open to them. You're leaning into them. You might even hold their hand for that matter. Little things like this make a difference in whether, you know, are you there or not? And it's something that I think that is important. You know, and it's just something that's there. And I, I look at, you know, I'm not a super political guy, but you look at the the last American election. I laughed. Like, first of all, you know, you talk about, you know, you know, Biden and stuff like that. You're like, oh, he's an old man, this and that. The first time I heard him speak at a debate, I looked at my wife and like he's gonna win. Mm. Trump you see, just you went, can see it. You can say that from the charisma already. Right from the first time I heard him talk within the first two minutes of him opening his mouth and going on, because Trump was just super negative. You kept cutting him up. You kept trying to belittle him. Whereas Biden looked at the camera and spoke to the people. As soon as he did that, I'm like, he's won. Like, it's his hands down, not a doubt in my mind. And of course, it was very, very cut in half, right? Like, I mean, it was very cut. It was a close race all the way through. And even to this day, it's amazing. I have many American friends, as we all do. There's lots of them that hate each other, right? Like, it's like you're on the other side of the fence. It's not cool. But as soon as I heard him talk for that first two minutes, I'm like, he's won the election. He's going to be the next president. Yeah, Insane. I think that it's generally, um, although I would say that Donald Trump's main quality, which he has, is actually his charisma, actually. <laughs> but so it's very difficult to win against a charismatic man like that. But I would assume that he didn't tap into his, in that particular election, he didn't tap into his positive qualities and was probably no. beaten by the quality sensuality and 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 uh, compassion which he didn't have compared to I think to they're Biden, both I guess. incredible people they're both incredible people they both had a lot of success in, in obviously many businesses in life right they're just total polar opposite people and it's like you know for the Americans they have to choose who they feel is the right one and good to them we live in Canada we don't have to worry about that we're a little different here but from that like I mean you're absolutely right I mean they have to use their charm in order to succeed in life. And in that one scenario, Trump did not do his best. And unfortunately, the other side did. That's well, un un unfortunately, regarding Donald Trump, he, as you know, he's an, in an incredible human being. And yeah. you know, he, ha he, his whole life has decided not to listen to anybody, okay? The rest of us have been taught 
okay, to listen to others that have been down the road that we are going, okay? This guy rolls with nobody, yep. period. And unfortunately, you know, come election time, everybody was telling him to do this, that, and the other. He would have won the election had he have listened. But his whole life, he never listened. And unfortunately, that was his downfall. He had no business losing to Biden. Zero. He should have won. But his arrogance and his I'm going to do things my way and everybody else can go blow, right, caught up with him, unfortunately. But just an incredible individual. There's no one like him on the planet with that type of arrogance. And to be successful at the same time is mind boggling, in my opinion. I think that uh, Donald Trump's quality, uh, actually, that he has the strongest one, which he was yeah. able to tap into it sometimes, but sometimes it goes, it's, it's, it's balancing on, the, on, the, on that brink of going into the negativity. It's the next quality. Yeah. It's called happy rebel. So it's good to be yeah. a rebel, which Donald Trump yeah. definitely is, because rebel goes against the tide. I am able to go against them. Your opinion is like this, but my opinion is like this. And that's making somebody attractive. But it's very important mm -hmm. that this is a happy rebel. If you are a negative rebel, yeah. somebody, something that creates, um, that just wrong, negative, happy rebel creates positive emotion, creates wow, that adrenaline a little bit in you. They're considered so I maverick. think his, yes. his personality, he's a maverick, right? He's, uh, he's by himself. Anyway. Yeah, that's exactly. This stuff here. Like you look into sales wise and everything else, both parties have to feel that they've won or you're not going to get a deal done. You know, you can be the happy rebel, be confident, be everything else, but both people still have to feel they've won. So if you can make the other side feel that they've won, well, then you're going to be able to get the deal done, right? Because you're going to make them feel good about this transaction and so on and about the decision that they're making. So another thing I found interesting about uh, Donald Trump is how many people wanted to be on his team. OK, but on, on, on another note, it, it, it blows my mind how many people have criminal charges and have gone to prison over this guy. We are talking in the hundreds. I think there's four or five hundred people that have criminal records and his lawyers have been sent to prison. I mean, who can get away with this? All of these people. And, uh, do apartment. you know? Do you know in you happy rebel when you meet with landlords what what is that part? Natalia thinks that your your main quality is a good it's a happy rebel. We even wrote it down last time. <laughs> we said oh. Kevin is a good happy rebel because he he's able to do something out of the ordinary sometimes and do something which yeah. people would think like ah oh, like this, but it's actually a happy one and makes you attractive. Yes, well, well, you know, th th that's a good point, and thank you. You know, and I, I got that from my dad. My dad, uh, he was vice president of Molson Breweries, never graduated high school, and it was his personality that got him to where he was, okay? So I have a few of his genes in me, and, and my dad has the ability to take any subject matter and make a whole heck of a lot of sense out of it, and in a way that nobody else would think of and that's how he kind of rose to the top in his profession so but thank you so awesome we so we're writing you down writing the positive side of donald trump as well as you <laughs> into the into the happy rebel so you're on the same page as donald trump the positive version okay. of him so that's good yes well, thank so you again. let's 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 repeat let's repeat those uh, let's repeat those qualities. So we said we we do happy rebel, which is Donald Trump and Kevin. We had the playful child, which is Jerry Seinfeld, and Jim Carrey. We had the communicative body, which is Barack Obama and myself. <laughs> then we had uh, <laughs> sensual, which was uh, which was George Clooney and Richard Gere. And we had the compassionate, which was Oprah and Stephen. So you see, we already have we have some people from our group which are in the in the you know charismatic group, which is quite awesome. Which means that we're actually a cool team. And <laughs> and I, I congratulate you with this. And um, I just wanted to say, uh, ask you. So do you have some some summarization 
to to all of this, to these qualities, to these characteristics? Do you agree that it it makes sense? In my opinion, it does. I think that a lot of this stuff. I mean, you know, I've taken a lot of personality profiling and so on like that over the years. And I know it's switching a topic just a little tiny bit, but I find that you know we have all four traits within us, and which ones are dominant ones are the ones that we actually do, and and so on like that. I think that in being a, a charismatic person. You need all this stuff to enjoy life, to be successful, to be able to help other people and, and be able to get certain things that you'd like to have by helping other people. And they're all so, so important. And I mean, you know, as far as, you know, our team wise, amongst everybody that's on this screen right now, everybody that's listening here and watching, we are an awesome team, right? I'm on the other side of the country, right? And you guys are there doing your thing. And it's like, you know, we are an awesome team. We have a good bunch of people that are here. And I'm very confident that if you throw any challenge, anything to do with real estate against us, we're going to know the answer. And that's something that's really powerful. You don't have to know all the answers yourself. You have to know where to go get the answers. And right here on this screen, the answers are right there in front of you, right? Just have fun, awesome. enjoy life, smile, right? And I mean, as far as even the presentation, but you're, you're amazing, but you really are. You know, you have the energy and stuff that's there, which is awesome. You are a great leader, you know, so are you, Natalia. I love hanging out with you guys. And, uh, you know, it's something to where it's just something that's really, really important. And there are little things that we all know within us, but are we confident enough to actually tell people? And that's where sometimes whenever you get exposed to some of these, you know, events, trainings, just conversations in general, it creates that spark again. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, they, 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 we spoke about this, boom. And then all of a sudden, you just make that little shift in your brain, that one little shift in your brain. And it could totally give you a totally different result with your life, your business, everything around you, right? It's like, this stuff is so important. So just thank you so much for everything that you've done today. And thank you for everybody. You guys are all amazing people. It's nice to see you all. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words and, and your positive energy. Does anybody else want to say something conclusive? Uh, I would just like to say, Thank you and everybody else for joining the meeting. Uh, something else I've learned from, from my parents and I uh, still practice to this day is, and we've all heard the saying before, always try to put other people first. And it goes a long way. You guys have a fantastic day. And Natalia, happy birthday. And Thank I you. guess I'll see you on Friday. Vadim, nice speaking with you. Stephen, take care. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. And we'll all talk soon. Thank you. But we also have uh, Ali who want to tell us something about Hi, Ali. follow up both, right? Uh, Are you already changing the next to the next subject? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So then I just wanted to say thank you very much for uh, for listening uh, li listening to me. I hope maybe you could, if you want, write down these five qualities and, and the images that we have to them and somehow you try to use them or small steps, tap into the positivity, tap into those positive qualities that you have. Or if you um, didn't find them yet, just try to analyze yourself a little bit. I'm sure that each one of you will be able to use this in some way. And each one of you has these qualities that are either present or still need to be unlocked. So thank you so much. Good. Thank you, Vadim, for your speech. It was great. So now I give the words to Alia, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the word to Alia and uh, and say uh, again, happy birthday, Natalia. And 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 bye bye. Have a nice have a nice uh, continued working day. Take care. Thank man. you. Thank you. Vadim. Thanks, guys. Also going to just chime in real quick and, and to say once again, happy birthday, Natalia. Thanks for the impromptu invite. Um, sorry, I could make it late on the call. That was a great presentation by by Badim. And uh, thanks for everybody's energy today. And that's that's a key point that I'm going to end on a final note. What Stephen was mentioning, uh, I think that word came through a couple of times uh, that I think I think uh, people just crave that that energy and that engagement. So I'll I'll take all of this forward and and have a good positive week. So I hope all, all of you do as well. You too. Take Thank care. you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.
So guys, same thing with myself there. Actually, I'm going to have to take off here too, but does anybody need anything? Is there anything I could do to help you guys today with anything at all? Thank you. Very happy you joined us. Here. Well, thank you for the, uh, the invite. It's been a very, very busy day and there's still a lot of stuff going on. But uh, like I said, if there's ever anything I could do for any one of you guys, please don't ever be afraid to send me a message and reach out. And I wish that you guys do have an incredible day. Natalia, happy birthday. Talk to you later on. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve. Later, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, are there. So today we just kind of um, easier for me to remember unrolling follow up boss, which is um, William and I very happy about, and we hope everybody else will be too, right? <laughs> Our right. new serum. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know where to begin. Um, Maybe just generally show what it is and then we have to go in more details. Just maybe show general website. Yeah, okay. We don't want your leads there, but just... <laughs> and also Irina is here with us. Again, yeah, she is uh, driving. Natalia, I have a CBC appointment. I'm leaving now, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Natalia, I kind of go around 11.30 today. So let's yes. have a very quick meeting and then, yeah, let's see. Okay, just mm -hmm. go ahead, Ale, then just show us. I think it will go past quick. Uh, Jeremy, we're here implementing different level of folder sharing. Jeremy was also worried about that and he likes to have improvements. Okay, so I, 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 anyway. I created different folder for that in a shared drive. Can you press? Yeah, yeah. I created this list up uh, 2023. You see, start shared drives with me too. Shared with me. I cannot see shared with. I can see shared drives in my uh, mm -hmm. phone, but I cannot see shared with me. Well, what we're trying so what, to what do? We're trying to. We try to remove shared with me and put everything in shared drive. Yeah, that then then makes sense. Yeah, that that, that, that is okay, right? Then I can. Yeah, yeah. we the try place. to restructure it, but it's right. a little bit struggling. Are you Anya? using the okay. iPhone or Android? iPhone. iPhone. Okay, so it's a bit different for you, but I could see both of them. Oh, you can see both of them on mine. Uh, shared with me is just labeled as share, and the uh, the shared drives is in my files folder. Hmm. Uh, Jeremy, how you use it through app? Yeah, I your... use it through the Google Drive app on my phone. Google Drive app. Uh -huh. you, you, you use what, Android or Android, iPhone? Yes. Android. Okay. Is there somebody using the iPhone? I use an iPhone, but I never used it on a phone yet. Oh, okay. But so I, need... I don't know yet. Okay, okay. But... Okay, so the first thing is that if possible i just please move all the shared with me folders into mm -hmm. share share the drive so i yeah. can see it in, in my iphone okay yeah okay I will yeah. With... that's what we're trying to to do yeah it's um... yeah mm -hmm. as you remember william uh, we will um, also introduce a second CRM system which will help us organize all files mm -hmm. yeah it will take maybe one week uh, more oh maybe. i see yeah see. no because we use we need uh, now we need some time to involve polar boss in our work and mm -hmm. after that we can uh, involve an lcrm system that will be convenient in sharing files and sharing okay. files for okay. every agent yeah. for bookkeeper so yeah so we okay. just okay good, good to know yeah 
But yeah, but yeah, uh, we try to uh, choose between dots, which William already knows, and mm -hmm. one of the remarks now using another system come out from Calgary. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, we uh, will compare. So, but maybe Alec, if it's not urgent, uh, William, maybe we can do it after Alec um, holidays because he have uh, two weeks vacations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, okay. Soon. Yeah, um, but actually I'm uh, currently reviewing more than 10 CRM systems just to choose uh, the perfect one for us. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I can share with you a review file where I put everything. Maybe you will not uh, something. Maybe you will want uh, some system. Maybe you will see that one system has features you want to uh, us uh, to have. Okay, so, please, you can put that file here, right? So we can review somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. So I will okay. files for you in shared drives as, mm -hmm. you, as you place in your drive. Yeah, well, just, yeah, okay, yeah. Only temporarily just put, remove the shared with me to share drive on, and then and I just, can see it. Can yeah. Now ignore uh, the shared with me because mm -hmm. we will not be using any more uh, this um, this one. Mm -hmm. cool. So yeah, I will organize shared drives for you uh, as you want, and then I will notify you when I complete. Okay. Yeah. And for Jeremy too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for Jeremy too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Yeah. I'll thank you. Introduction, introduction to follow a boss. So please uh, log in and set password and play around and start using this platform. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you again. And then thank you and happy birthday again, Natalia. Yeah, happy bye. birthday, Natalia. Okay. <laughs> thank Don't. you. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye.